So can I get the flavor of what uh, link to XML is all about? Yeah. Now with link, you can only get queries out, right? I can't use it to either update or insert to the Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, right now we're looking at uh, just ways to go ahead and read stuff from a container. But yeah, you can use other link operators and the object model. And this will be based on, you know, what, where you're applying the link query. Like I'll show you a quick demo here on link to ADO. And then you make use of something called a data context. And the data context is sort of like, and don't take this analogy too far, kind of like a link aware data adapter. And so using this data context and these things called entity classes, you can move data back and forth. And you can do everything you would do with a normal data provider using link. Call stored procs, get subsets, insert records, delete records, look up records, the whole thing. So five years from now, will data adapters, et cetera, be obsolete? Oh, I'm sure five years from now, this will be obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that brings up a good question, though. You know, um, I'm sure in half a year this will be obsolete the way things are going. Um, the cool thing is, is that like link to XML is just seen as another aspect of doing XML programming. So the link to XML object model can work with the older model. Same thing for data access. When you're using link to ADO, if you already have a SQL connection and a SQL command, you can just throw it into the mix. So it's not as if you have to cut the cord and say, I can never use my data provider again. I have to use link. This was set up so that a lot of the parameters will take, for example, IDB connection. Right? So either a connection object or something about link. Right? So they work pretty harmoniously together. OK, so I've got about one hour left. I'll just show this last little bit here. Real quick, I just wanted to give you a taste of what we can do with link to ADO. Guess I'll do this. That's not a very sexy one. Well, well, so be it, I suppose. I'm just confused because it almost looks like there's one file that's gone. Let me just take a, yeah, somehow a file got deleted here. Well, that's no good. But that's okay. I'll show you some of the basics here. Then we'll move on to some of the Ws. Okay, so remember now when we're working with link, this can be applied to a variety of data sources. And the thing is, though, is it's not as if we're just going to take a link query and just somehow point it to an Oracle database or a SQL Server database and say, do something with it. There has to be some kind of plumbing that'll do some kind of a translation, right? So the thing that we have to do plumbing, number one, we have a thing called an entity class. And an entity class is simply a class definition that models an element in the real database. If you think about a strongly typed data set but much more lightweight, you're going to be on the right ballpark. Okay? The way that we define a data context is through a whole bunch of different attributes. So I can say, here is my class. This field represents that column in the database table. This one represents the primary key of that column in the database table. Right? This class name represents that table name. Now, you could generate those yourself. But thankfully, we have really great support in Visual Studio. Maybe I'll show you that. When you have a, a project that has link support in it, which is the default for 2008, you can add a new item into your projects called link to SQL classes. Okay. Now, what this will do, okay, this will give you a chance to say, I just want to use some drag and drop operations and have the tool generate all my entity classes as well as this thing we call the data context. Again, I kind of position that. Think of that as a data adapter, which has link smarts. Okay, So I could say, here is the database that I want to play with. And I know that this particular database has a table that I want to talk to, like maybe the credit risks. So I can just drag one of these guys over here. And it now generated for me this class type. Okay. Now, not shown on the designer, 
but it is part of your code base, is also a, a data context that will now do all of your database CRUD for that table. Okay? Uh, I could also plop in maybe some stored procedures. So I could uh, come in here. My computer wakes up. And I could drag and drop a stored proc on here. And it's going to now write the code that I need to go ahead and call that stored proc. Okay? Now, of course, where would this be a better place to do this? Inside of a DLL. So I have a nice data access library. Right? But you just drag and drop all your junk on top of the designer. Obviously, you might have to go back and tweak things here or there. Okay? But once it's done, you now have all the stuff you need to apply link queries to that database table or tables. Okay? So you see the benefit of link, you know, because like, what do we have today in 2.0 and 3.0? We have to memorize all these different diverse object models just to get data, right? Here's how I do it for XML. Here's how I do it for a database. Here's how I do it for a collection. Now, again, it's not rocket science, but it's just asymmetrical, okay? So link says, here's just one common way to get your data. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move along now to talk a bit about the W's. But any, any questions about link from this high level? Yeah. Just real quick. Um, so I can actually, let's say I have a couple, I have two classes, and one is a collection, like door. I have a thing of like door and a collection of doors. Yeah. I can actually do a link query into my own object. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, if you had, um, you know, a custom type, you could query things right there. And you know, I mean, I, I mean, to say I scratched the surface is a ridiculous understatement. You know, there are link operators to do joins, to do aggregates. I mean, there's tons of stuff you can do. 